conversation with one of our fellow VIP sisters, Carrie Pinero. She'll be popping on here in a little bit, and I'm beyond excited to motivate you. I always believe you get to learn from someone else, and when you hear their story, it is the blueprint that motivates you. And here she is, is. I'm really excited. So make sure you guys get comfortable and welcome, Carrie. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you. I am beyond excited. First of all, everyone, welcome to the JNL show here on Facebook, where we interview amazing women like Carrie, who is a miracle in motion. I had the opportunity of meeting Carrie in Tampa in this past September. We've been kind of following each other online, and now the time has come where we powered up to truly make some big success breakthroughs happen and miracles. Carrie, she's gonna get a chance to tell her story, but from me knowing her, I know that she is strong, tenacious, resilient. She never backs down from a challenge, and she has proven to all of us that our problems seem kind of small when we hear what she has had to go through since suffering a spine injury in 2006, over 30 surgeries later, over 13 of them being on her back alone, and now she has to face going back into surgery. So first of all, I want to thank you, Carrie, for taking the time to motivate each and every one of us, and more importantly, being the change we want to see in the world by getting up every day and kicking butt and being a solid, strong woman. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Now, I know you. Go ahead and share more about yourself, um, your story, where we can also find you on social media, and anything else you'd like to start with our Facebook Live. Anything I'd like where else to find me, or I'm sorry? Yes, just go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself. For anyone that doesn't know you, have your story, that how it happened in 2006, what happened? Okay, so um, in 2006, I was um, newly just had my, my daughter. She's now 17, so she was a baby. Wow. And I was um, on the lake. We lived in a house on the lake. My best friend, Wendy, who was my support system as well. Yes. There with me. My sister jumped off the dock and I was floating on a float in about a foot and a half of water on my stomach. She jumped off the dock and accidentally, she didn't put her feet beside me. Someone distracted her. So she put her feet both in my thoracic spine and oh. broke my back that day. And I didn't know because they stayed in the water for the rest of the day. Right. And then oh my goodness. Day, it was crazy. Oh my goodness. So kind of, you know, back in 2006, that happened. And just throughout the past 17 years, you've had surgeries, therapy, going in and out of hospitals. I know that when I first heard your story, I was flabbergasted. At the same time, it really humbled me and proved to me that whatever problems I'm having and everyone out there watching right now, um, they're just so excited to support you. No matter what problem you guys have out there, when you're someone else's problem, it gives you that that contrast of, oh, well, maybe my problems are not that important or not that big and I can get through them. So um, I'm gonna ask you the first question. And by the way, I am doing a giveaway and I'm watching all of our comments here. You know, I love to do giveaways. One lucky winner will be getting a complimentary JNL VIP wellness package sent to them, no cost, just a free gift for watching and getting motivated. So make sure you guys watch and interact. We have people from France. Hello, Ratiba. Oh my, I'm excited. So let's start with our first question. Um, when you first experienced partial paralysis, how did you transform your fear into faith? And how did you take positive action to get the medical care and the therapies that you needed? Oh, that's a great question. So when it first happened, I was scared, yeah. but I, throughout my other life experiences, I, I was strong and I was a coach um, to a bunch of girls in high school and I was a coach anyway. So I really wouldn't accept no for an answer. Mm -hmm. I just thought this, this cannot be happening to me. I have a brand new baby. I have two other children. I just got married. This is not the life that I yes. want. To see. So I really, let's see, I just contacted everybody. Yes. And I use my support systems. And I know it sounds crazy, but I, I actually started a Facebook page and where I was just, you know, it transferred, support. I was just kind of angry support. But mm -hmm. there's all kinds of be, kinds of support to be had in this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
um, I just kept thinking there's no way I'm going to lie in a bed and be, a, I used to call it a junk box in a bed oh. for my children. Like you lead by example. And I knew that I wanted to be a good mom. That's really all I ever wanted to be in life. So I just kept having that vision forefront in my mind. And Love that. I went into everything with an open mind. Yes. But if you didn't, if I didn't like what you had to say, I would be like, okay, is that the A doctor? Is that the A therapist? Or is that the D therapist? Is that the C therapist? Yes. Yeah. So um, I just, I wouldn't accept no. You, yeah. you tell me no. And I would, I would do my research. I would call and call. And it was a battle for two, three years. It was a battle. And it, it was a real battle. And one of the nurses said, you know, you have to be a sir, but she used the B word in order to get what you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> so that stands for be in total control here, by the way. <gasps> right. Yes, it Good. totally does. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, uh, a lot of my, I lost a lot of family. I lost a lot of friends because they were mad at me for the way that I was per se acting, but it was my life. This is my yes. life. Yes. You don't pay my bills. You don't control me. Right. What I want to do. And I want to be a mom that my kids can look up to. Yeah. And I'm going to chime in here. I love that. I got a lot of golden nuggets. You are not going to take no for an answer. You are relentless on getting the help, the treatment that you had. And also being a great mother. I love that you, what you're really kind of saying is that you had strong decision-making muscles. And you know me, the queen of props. Here I go with my props. When you make a strong decision and you're like, I'm going to have a strong decision making muscles and I'm not going to back down and I'm not going to take no for an answer and I want to be a good mother. And you also said, and I always visualized myself as being a great mother. That's what I wanted to be. So you went back to visualizing what you wanted to be a great mother and also open mind. I like that. Um, and when you have an open mind and you want to also never give up and you're strong, you're going to get successful. You're going to create success no matter what. Mm -hmm. I love what you said about support, community. That is so essential to anyone healing. And I know that you have had to heal, go into surgery again, heal, go into surgery again, and heal. Healing, I believe, is a nonstop journey. But when you have support and you make it fun and you kind of laugh at the end of the day, no matter what your trials or tribulations were, you could actually say, you know what? I can do this. I can, I'm going to get up stronger tomorrow. I'm going to get up stronger the next day. I'm going to prove to my kids. And I love that you said that, Carrie, because how your kids see you. And I talked about this with Kelly, the mirror neurons, how they see you being strong or weak. It is so essential. I always wanted my sons to see me as being strong. I know you want your daughter to see you as being strong. So you had those strong decision-making muscles and that you would not take no for an answer. I love your, your, um, your answer. I got so many great golden nuggets of wisdom there. I'm going to put the ball in your court. And by the way, Facebook is blowing up. We love you, Tammy, Brooke, Antonella, Shelby, Chelsea. Yes. We got all of our VIP tribe here. Your tribe attracts, your vibe attracts your tribe. So I want to just say thank you to everyone watching and make sure you share out this video. Maybe you'll have someone get impacted and touched and transform their life. All right, the ball's in your court. I'll let you ask me a question and we're gonna continue having fun. Okay, so I know that you have not had as many surgeries as I have, but yeah. what would you really say is your blackest, most challenging moment that wow. you've had in your life? Um, and really, what do you use to summon up the strength to get up and get moving and keep on going and doing it over and over again? Yes, you know what? Thank you for asking that question because it's all about healing. My darkest, deepest moment, and I actually wrote about it in my book, which is the Motivational Kick in the Butt book. It was when I had a miscarriage in a third world country in Kingston, Jamaica, and the medical system there is like very, very, very challenging. It's, it's like non-existent really. And I, my life was in danger. So when I miscarried, I blacked out, I was rushed in. I, my whole body went into shock. I thought I was gonna die. It was pouring down rain. And if you could just imagine, you're in almost like this jail cell, how their hospitals were, no air condition. And the little windows had those bars and no glass. I mean, I was looking outside, it was pouring down rain. Um, so I was thinking, am I going to die? Am I going to die? And I remember just saying, God, I, I don't want to die. I know that we lost our baby and that was shattering to me. But, um, I remember just saying, hearing actually, you know, have faith, don't give up. You're not going to die. Just stay strong. 
So after um, I'd actually come out because they had to do emergency DNC on me, I looked out the, the window, the same window with the bars and it was just weren't raining. And I remember seeing this vivid rainbow. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, that rainbow impacted me so hard. So if we can weather the storm and stay true, we will see the rainbow. That's why I always say April showers bring May flowers. That was my darkest and deepest moment. By the grace of God, three months later, we got pregnant with Jaden. After Jaden was born, we got pregnant with Dylan. Fast forward to today, they're now 19 and 17 years old. So as a mother, from one mother to another, you know how that feels when you see your children happy. That's all that we want. And I could almost want to just take their pain away from them. Um, so those are, that's my deepest moment. And getting through that is really just to never give up and have faith and knowing that if you can weather the storm, just like you are Carrie with your health issues and challenges that we will have the rainbow and that at the end of the rainbow, there's a big pot of gold. So just stay focused, stay, you know, VIP powered up and just know that we are going to see the rainbow at the end of all of these personal storms we're having. So thank you so much for asking that question. And now um, I'm going to ask you another question. Anything you wanted to add to that before I go to the next one? I I, I can't even imagine what you went through in that. And um, as a mom, like, you know, I, I, the sorrow that you must have felt, but it takes, takes a lot of courage and being courageous to yes. really go on from that. And then even trying to have another child after yes. that. You know, I applaud yes. you for that. that. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, boss lady. For one woman to another, real recognizes real. So, you know what? That's why our energy is so vibrational on the same we resonate on the same vibration i was afraid we were going to be talking over each other we're going to be having so much fun we're going to be because <laughs> our energy is so alike which i love people say you have wild energy you have crazy energy and that's when we started talking i was like oh my god we're cut from the same cloth so i'm excited about this interview all right so you know having a lot of ups and downs trials and tribulations and health issues that have affected your daily activities living with daily pain, what advice and motivation and inspiration can you give to our audience out there watching who may ha be having a bad day? You know, to help them take positive action, to transform it, uh, a bad day into a positive one or a bad situation to a positive one. Any words of information and motivation that you've learned along the way? Um, so I truly believe that the first you know, a couple minutes of your morning is yes. truly the hardest. So when you're in pain and you're suffering and all that, you know, you really have to like one, two, three, jump, one, two, three, jump out of bed. And yes. For a long time, I count from one to five and just, um, just went for it, just get out of bed. And then you got to find your own motivation. And I know this sounds weird, but I would literally look yep. at memes, you know, yes, yes. and I'd read them and, you know, I think of things that I was grateful for. And I always focused on what I couldn't um could do instead of what i can't do and a lot of people focus on what they lose yes and I look at it like that because you only use a little bit of your brain so you have all this brain power to gain so much knowledge and learn new things and so what i could do still i got really good at yes. and then from there i grew and you know on my darker days i have a, a best friend who God, she's been with me through thick or thin. And if you have someone like that in your life, when you're nasty yes. to, she just loves you no matter what, yep. you keep that person in your life. Yes. And it just, it baffles me in my mind that all through all of this, she's stuck by my side. And yes. she's been a light. And then I got to be a light in her life. Yes. And you just, you never know where your support's going to come from, whether it's a walk, whether it's, something that somebody says, whether it's something that you read, some group that you follow. And I always thought I'm going to find people who are like me, but are doing yes. things I want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's really, you know, and there are days when I don't motivate myself, but I have learned to give myself the grace of just, okay, we're going to have a bad day today yep. and whatever that looks like. The other one tidbit that I want to give people is that you really need to write down what you do in the day because you don't realize what you do during the day until you write it down. And I think yes. that's so important. I For me, it. I always look at, I didn't do enough. And then I go back and I read, and yes. I'm like, whoa, well, I did a lot, <laughs> you know? Yes. I so love that. That's really, yeah, you know what? So much things to say, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but I got so many 
great success tips. I love the one, two, three jump. I know people can also count on five, four, three, two, go, right? So priming yourself in the morning, already making the decision it's gonna be a great day. Then I like that you said you're going through what you're thankful for because then when you're in that attitude of gratitude and when you're grateful, you actually fine tune your energy to receive more positive things, more blessings. So I love that. I also got from what you said, the power of focus. You said people would focus on what they can't do. So I flipped it, which I love to flip things, flip them right on their back. And you were focusing on what you can do. And then you got really good at what you can do. I love that. You also mentioned the brain power. We only use a little bit of our brain power. We got to tap into that. We have to have our 10 brains going at once. And that you had friends that were sticking by you. The support is so important. You know, I can really relate to also what you're saying, write down what you did, have a journal. I wrote earlier in our VIP group, what, your gratitude journal, write in your gratitude journal. And I'm grateful for all of you. So what you write about, what you think about, your power of your focus. And going back at the beginning of your answer, you said memes, anything that kind of like would make you laugh or I love to work hard, but you guys know me. I love a good time. I love to party. I love to party in a good way, get my positive energy up and get things all up and popping. That is what's going to give you energy, more energy than a cup of coffee. When you start laughing and make it fun, you've got to make it fun. Look, people are going to create hell for you anyway. So why create hell for yourself? You know, so way to go on those wonderful, wonderful answers. I got so many great tidbits and I know everyone else did. Antonella is saying they're loving the show. So I'm going to now let you ask me a great, uh, ask me the next question. Okay. So you are always talking about this crazy VIP power and I love yes. it. I love the energy. That I, got. I thought you were crazy. And I'm like, oh, she's my kind of crazy. Yes. Yes. So for those of us that are listening, uh, maybe who don't know what that is, could you just yes. kind of tell us a little bit more about what it is? You know, what it is to be yes. a VIP woman? Yes. A VIP woman is someone just like you, Carrie. And the great thing is, is that there isn't one type of woman. It's a woman who has stepped into her own personal power. See, as a woman, we almost have been raised to feel ashamed to be strong or to be a bish, be in total control here, or to talk about what we want or be ambitious, but with integrity. So a long life, we've been beaten down. We've been used. We've been abused. And I'm getting chills as I say this. We have, we have voluntarily given our VIP power away to other people, to, other, to men, to situations, to a job, to friends who really didn't have our best interests, we gave it away because we were made, felt ashamed for having it, or it was bad to have it. So we let it go, or it was taken from us, you know, it was robbed from us. And we were kind of beaten down by life or situations. And we became not victorious, we became the victim. So when a woman says, uh-uh, 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 and she has an epiphany and says, I'm gonna live life for me on my terms for me, I'm gonna get in shape for me, I'm gonna be beautiful for me, I'm going to work on myself for me, she reclaims her VIP power. And then when she knows that it's hers, she just unleashes it on everybody. When she unleashes it, she finds her other like-minded women that connect with her. Now, at the same time, she's gonna eradicate people that had not her best interest in mind, that were just there to use her, to take advantage of her, to manipulate her. And it's a great, beautiful journey to see when you step into your VIP power and you reclaim it and then you unleash it and you celebrate in all areas of your life, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, um, financial, professional. And then when you get around other like-minded women that are rooting for you, that's when the VIP power just comes like, you know, it comes like, Whoa! you know, you start here like a dead fish on a slab and then you're all like, you know, I am a VIP queen and it's such a beautiful journey. And that's what I'm really seeing in you and all of our VIPs. So to make, to wrap it all up, it is when a woman truly understands her worth and then she adds tax <laughs> and she never backs down from being a real authentic self. So that's, that's, I want to just, anything you want to add to that before I ask you the next question? No, I, I love all that. And I, I, that's, awesome that's kind of what i practice you know and yes. uh, you start finding your power the negativity and the toxic goes right out the window Gone. yes bye. yes bye felicia adios right yep. and um before i ask you the next question just to tie that up 
we have to really fine tune our VIP power because along the way we'll see that, oh, we're slipping back in old habits. We were letting it go. We let this situation kind of bring us down in energy. It beat us up a little bit. No, we have to stay high on that vibration because yeah. then, I mean, no matter what you're facing, another surgery or whatever obstacle, you're going to conquer it. You've already come out victorious. You just have to show up in life. It's a great kind of phenomenon. And that kind of leads me to the next question. You know, you are mentally strong, obviously, from everything you've gone through. And you are such a cool, fun person. I watch you. I watch your Instagrams. And you're just like always up for a good time, always doing your TikToks and having a great time with your family and your daughter. Um, that really shows that you have a great disposition, even what you've been through. What mental strength exercises or kind of like your mind hacks would you use that you kind of go into every day or into your surgeries that, um, you know, especially now when you're going into your next round of surgeries, what are your top mind hacks or success hacks to help you hack into your happiness, even on your bad days? So you come out better and stronger. Yeah. So, um, first of going into surgery, I don't want to know what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's your job. It's not my job. I didn't learn about it. I don't want to know. And yes. I truly believe I'm going to come out stronger and better after every single surgery. Yes. No matter what happens, that is one mental thing that you need to know. You've got to mm -hmm. just leave it to the experts. I don't want to know what you're doing. I don't want to mm -hmm. know about slicing mm -hmm. and dicing. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, every day is different. I, I've come to the mountains to heal, really um, put my feet in nature to just ground myself. Yes. Um, after every surgery that I've had, you know, for the past 10 years, I've come to the mountains to just be by myself. And one thing you have to learn to be dependent on you as yes. much as you can be um, because it does take a lot to be dependent on other people. And that was a big hard thing for me was um, depending on other people. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for you. Yes. So mentally, I'm always trying to modify things in my brain. How can yes. I do something as simple as put on my socks if I can't do that? How can I make yes. it fun? I need humor. I'll, I used dark humor for a long time. Now I, I tend to go on a little bit of a lighter side. Yes. Laughing and just humor. You know, that's the big thing. And if you can't find something to laugh about, yes. go find something to watch that makes you laugh. But yes. other words, music. Yes. Uh, I, if I want to change my energy, right away, I crank the tunes up. I sing at the top of my lungs. I dance. I don't care who's watching. And yes. really, you've got to be free to be you. Yes. You know, I, a lot of people now are saying, you know, oh, you're doing all these crazy things on TikTok. And I'm like, no, I'm doing that because that's me. Okay. That's just me <laughs> crazily. <laughs> <Yes. you know? laughs> crazy. And that just gets me pumping to Good. really shoot my mental attitude because I didn't always have a plan. I just had a vision. You know, everyone yes. says, you have a, vis a, a plan to get to your goal. I just pictured something in my brain and I just kept thinking of it, thinking of it, thinking of it. eventually yes. it got there. Yes. Now I need to fine tune that. Now I have a plan, you know, next goal, next goal. But, you know, just really visualizing yourself happy. What happy you would look like. I love it. I love you it. You need money. Yeah. For that. Yeah. And I'm going to chime in. I love everything you said. Depend on you. You know, we're investing in so many people and we invest our VIP power into people. And sometimes those people are just like a black hole. They're not going to be reciprocal. They're not going to give it back to you. So I like how you said, depend on yourself, become self-independent and disciplined and take care of yourself. You are the most important person in the world, yeah. right? So I love, I really resonate with what you said there. And to also mentally modify. Now, when you said, you know, just putting on your socks, imagine that sometimes it must've been hard for you to be able to bend over with your back surgeries and put on your socks. So again, everyone out there watching, we don't have any problems. We're so blessed. We had a talk earlier off, off social media about divine intervention, angels, guardian angels, our higher power. I know that um, all that spiritual energy and, and knowing that my higher power is watching over us really must have also helped you have the faith of going into the surgeries as well. And also when you got out, being able to dance, people take things so much for granted, being able to move their feet. I remember when I had an epidural when I was giving birth and I couldn't move my from the waist down. I was so scared after I'd given birth. I still couldn't feel my legs. I was like, am I going to walk again? Just for those like little 30 minutes afterwards, I was 
horrified. They can only imagine what you went through. So dance while you have the chance. And like you said, you're doing it for you, not for anyone else. And if anyone has a problem with your TikToks and you having fun, that's their problem. I like to say this, if my my self-confidence offends you, that's your problem, not mine. So yeah, yeah. And, and I really connected with what you said about, I never really had a plan, but I had a vision. I know what I wanted. I had the vision of what I wanted, but getting there wasn't really part of it because I knew it would fall into place. The universe would take care of that. As long as I knew what I wanted, almost like the law of attraction, ask, believe, receive, and, and that it would manifest. So I got so much great information off of that i'm gonna and we're blowing up facebook everyone is loving it we're on fire it is there <laughs> yes all right i'm gonna let you ask me a question because we're on a roll here okay so you're always teaching us that vip um you know in the group that it's so much more than just exercise it's yes more, you know, it's inspiration it's also the type of woman that you keep in your tribe yes um, what do you feel like this is so important to a woman's overall complete wellness I agree. You know what? It is, it is a complete, complete, a woman is so multidimensional, like a diamond. That's why I have the diamond in the logo. We're multifaceted. We're not just one dimension. I've been part of so many groups, workout programs, gyms, where it was just calorie in calorie out the whole time. The lady was yelling at me. I don't even know what she was saying. And, and I got left, you know, feeling empty, not connecting. I knew there was something deeper than just doing this you know, aerobics class or doing this workout or doing this boot camp, and then just eating that diet that they handed me. I knew there was something more and I had to really dig deep in myself and create the program myself, which was emotional because 80% of our eating is emotional, right? Mm -hmm. Mental right here. The, the workout from the neck up is the most important one here. You have to make your mind your best friend. As women, we're always beating ourselves down and we're not this, we're not that. And I know yo-yoing up and down, gaining weight, losing it, gaining weight, losing it. I'd tormented myself. So mental, emotional, spiritual. Man cannot live by bread alone, it says in the good book. So what do we live by? Daily motivation. That's why I love to do these Facebook lives with other like-minded women that are kind of plugged into the light, that live and feed off of motivation and inspiration and kicking butt and silencing all of our critics and cynics with our actions, right? There's people on the sidelines that are not even in the arena of life saying, you can't do that. Well, we're on the arena, at least trying and kicking butt and making touchdowns and making goals and making home runs. And we have people in the stadiums judging us. So I had to really create a program of women that are an athlete. What does that mean? Think like one, eat like one, um, um, live their life like one, like you said, with the discipline and, and take care of themselves so they can be the MVP of their life because at the end of the day you're the mvp of your life carrie you know i'm the mvp of my life and for our families so this is so much more than just doing jumping jacks and burpees and eating those egg whites and oatmeal it is <laughs> you know it is so much more in depth and that's why i feel like we're kind of pulling at the women's heartstrings in our group because once you heal yourself you can then really really achieve your goals i know and and you know that once you get to your dream size and you're working out and all this, if you're not healed from the heart and your spirit, you're not happy. You're still going to be miserable at a size two in your dream body, bikini body. You're not going to be happy. So that's why it's so important to also hit every area and even food, you know, but having a good relationship with food. So to tie this all up, it's an all encompassing holistic program for the modern day woman who wants it all, but also deserves it all. Just like you and all of our women that are watching, you deserve it all. Whoever told you you don't deserve it all or you can't have it, they're lying, jealous, or on the dark side, and you don't need them in your life. We, you need to be around a supportive group of women that really want to celebrate everything, every little minute, every little second in your life. So I hope that answered your question. Anything you want to add to that before I ask you the next question? Oh, that, that was so much information, <laughs> great information, it's just, just, just living that because people want to, even if you are, you know, overweight and yo-yoing and going back and yes. forth, you know, it's okay to keep doing over and over again, to keep rebuilding yourself back up because yeah. every time you do, you come back stronger. Yes. You don't think you do, you do, you know? Yes, yes, come back stronger. I love that. I love that. All right, I'm going to go to the next question here. 
under really bad days, you know, we all have those bad days, but I always say, you know, even our bad days, there's a lesson to be learned there. I just really have transformed my mind so much, but on those bad days, you know, maybe even like post-surgery, what tips, tools, and techniques would you like to share with all of our audience watching that will help them kind of overcome their personal challenges? Well, I honestly, I like to, I, since I get operated on all the time and I have to build myself back up, like I say, I have to pick up, pick up that one pink weight and it's yeah. one pound and no, I have to go to 25. Yes. I like to kind of jot down, even if it's not so good thoughts of yes. what's going on. And I put yes. that in a um, thing so that way I can look back. Well, you were here this time, but you're not there now. Like you did yes. all of this then, but now you've grown and you've found new ways and you've perfected your new ways. Yes. Um, there are going to be bad days and it's okay to have a bad day. Yeah. It's all right to lay on the couch and not do yes. anything to shut off the world. That's a big yes. thing for me is yes. shutting off social media. Yes. Getting out of that because when you're sick and when you're ill, you yes. tend to look at Rest. other people's lives who are healthy and compare your life. That's not your life. That is someone else's. And, and it's not what you see on social media either. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But really you just, you need to just document where you're at, whether it's a few words, even if you do a talk thing, you know, talking to your phone, something. Yes. You know? And I do a lot of apologizing as well, because when I don't feel well and I'm in pain, I tend to take that out on the people that I love. So it's never too late to apologize or say you're sorry or explain your situation. Um, yes. Give knowledge because when people have knowledge about what's going on in your life, they understand you more as a person. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Beautiful. I got so many great golden nuggets of wisdom there. Um, it's amazing that when you go into surgery and I remember cause my husband had two very big neck surgeries and when he had come out and I can kind of, I was getting a little peek into your personal stories. You almost have to learn to walk again. You okay. almost have to learn to pick up that one pound weight again. And we take this for granted, you know, picking up five pounds. So everyone out there watching, please don't take your health for granted. Listen to Carrie's story. You know, she has to learn to walk again, has to learn to use her muscles again. Everything is connected to the spine. So really enjoy that. I also love that you said to journal so you can really remember how far you've come. And I always say a journey of a thousand miles starts with one, not step, but rep. So keep repping it out. Keep your journey going. And I also want to say this about social media. That's why I love people fake the funk on social media. They all like to put on a certain aura or personality, but we keep it real. We keep it so real. You got to keep it real. So you're not judging yourself against other people because pretty soon the whole truth, you know, will come out. So I love that you're not subjecting yourself to that and you're giving yourself that quiet healing time. And the power of saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Now, no matter if it was you lashing out at someone because you didn't feel good, or even someone watching right now, the power of asking for forgiveness. And it's not even for them, it's for you. And also forgiving them. There's a big power in that. Yeah. Healing energy in that. Your heart's happy. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. All right, I'm gonna have you ask me another question because we're on a roll here. Okay, so I hear you talking a lot about believe and never give up, and that is um, best yet to come. As a survivor yes. myself, I know this is important. Yes. So why is it important to you so much that you really hammered into us? You hammered into us so much throughout the day, and I love that. Yes. So why is it so important to you? Okay, because even on the bad days, in trials, tribulations, challenges. I know I've seen too many miracles to turn a blind eye because that would be a blasphemy for me to say, oh, that wasn't a miracle. That would be just an outright lie of what I saw and experienced that when you believe and you never give up and you use that F word, which is faith, <laughs> which I have right here, faith, so I never forget. <gasps> no matter what bad situation comes your way, there is a learning lesson in it. There's a blessing, a gift wrapped up in all of that ugliness. And it's our job as children of God to see the good in that and to see the lesson and to see the answer and to see that, oh my goodness, I'm gonna get stronger from this. You know, I don't like to say, why me? I like to say, try me. And when you say that, it automatically transforms the bad situation to a blessing. And 
it is even written in the good book, you know, those that have will be given more. Those that have not, it'll be taken from them. I really resonate with that and I always was wondering, what is, what is it that they have? So I dug, dig, I dug deeper into my own personal studies. It's faith. Those that have faith, they're going to receive more. Those that don't have faith, it'll be taken from them. That really was like, wow, it seems unfair, but that's the way it is. And the more faith I had, the more blessings I was getting. And I was like, oh, this is pretty easy. Let me just believe and never give up. When you say no matter what comes my way, you've already made the decision to become successful in that situation. And you guys know my stories. I've been through a lot, held them back too many times, even mentioned here. And I know your story, Carrie, and everyone else watching, you're maybe personally have gone through something or you're going through something. And just remember my words, or you will be going through something that you have to have faith and you have to believe that you are strong enough to overcome it and that you will get better on the other side. On the other side of that trial and tribulation is your victory. And if you give up, this is my closer here. If you give up, you are shaking hands with the devil. That's straight up. You're saying, you know what? You're right. I'm a piece of crap. I'm nothing. I came from nothing. I'm good for nothing. You're right. I'm agreeing with you. That's why I never give up because it pisses the devil off. So that's my answer. <laughs> I love it. That was a great answer. <laughs> oh my God. We could go on a whole show on that. All right. We're on a roll here. So I'm going to go anything you want to add to that before I ask you the next question. Um, I'm there's just so much there. You, you I know, know. I know. Don't ever give up. You just can't give up. You know, I, uh, I ride a Harley and wow. you know, I, um, I, one instance, I come out of surgery and I had staples in my side and a drain oh. tube and I had a pick line and I looked at my husband and I go, I'm duct taping that. Oh, and I had a catheter. I was like, I'm duct taping this on. Yes. I get to ride my motorcycle. Yes. And I said, I duct tape it on yes. just to prove to myself that I could get around on it. Not like around the yes. block, around the block. Yes. Good. Never give up on things that you love either. Cause there's always a way, you know, yes. never give oh up. God. I love that. I love that. You're again reminding me of when I had to really take care of my husband during those very dark times. We had a lot of dark clouds, but then the sky broke and the rainbow came. So never give up. And I know you probably felt so free, um, felt so free and alive when you're doing that. By the way, I know I'm going to mention your Facebook at the end, but it is live, fit, and free, right? Mention yeah. it right now, can you? It is. Uh, it, it's uh, F it. I'm alive, fit, and free. Alive, yes. fit, and free. And um, I've had it for a long time. And I just, I, I love that because I get to watch myself transform. Yes. I like to look at the earlier stuff. So I'm like, oh, she was angry. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but I no. use that anger to fuel myself forward a lot of times, put it into workouts, try to, you know, put it into the weights, really. Yes. You know. Yes. I love it. Well, good. I'm going to ask you um, the next question, which is out of all of your surgeries, out of all of your ups and downs, you know, all of your rehabs, because I know that's another, after you do the surgery, then you got to go to rehab and learn everything again, to use your body again. What are the main life lessons and takeaways that you've learned that you want to impress upon everyone listening today? Uh, never take anything little for granted. I, yes. I am so grateful for like this bottle, I, like a paper clip, like the things that you find yeah. gratefulness, because when you're sick and when you're ill, yes. you look at life in a whole nother way than most people you know wow. right now I'm looking out over the mountain and I'm just like oh look at that tree look at this you know and half the time people have blinders on yes it just passes them by and you know ju it's so just true. the little things it's the little moments in life yes. the little laughs the little special times the, the it, it really is and that's the bottom line and if yeah. you can focus on the little moments then it leads to great big moments and being in the moment be, yeah being in the moment I love it. I love it. Wonderful. Um, I love that, that gratitude. You keep hitting that gratitude. You keep hitting that G spot, that <laughs> gratitude spot. <laughs> that is it. That's the, that's the most important one. Because when you hit that one, all those miracles just start vibrating out, honey. Let me tell you what, that is so important. Be grateful for the cup. Be grateful for the thing. By the way, I know we're whole, the whole world, I don't even want to mention the word. We're going through the, the, the whole things going on with the pandemic. But I know you've had your quote unquote 
coronavirus since 2006 dealing with that. So I just want to say thank you so much. You know, I also want to say it's women like you and all of our VIP tribe that never give up. We get up, we get dressed up, we show up, we kick butt. We never give up. We go to work. We take care of our kids. We take care of our family. We take care of ourselves. It's that tenacity that we need to never really, because like I said, if you give up, you're really saying, I'm not, I'm grateful for none of this. No, it's not good enough, God. I don't, I don't want the cup. I don't want the, that. I don't want my family. And so I'm so proud that you, that you shared that with everyone. All right, I'm going to put the ball in your court and you can ask me, we have like two more questions. So this has been so much fun. Okay. Um, I have a, a, another a totally off topic chat. How, like, how did you build up your consistency? Yeah. How did you make yourself consistent so much in yeah. everything that you do that it became your way of life? Like yeah. what tips and tricks can you give everyone, you know, as far as like setting your schedule, being accountable, not only to everyone else, but to yourself and your family and really living, you live your truth. You know, you. I've watched that uh, over the last year and it's crazy. Thank what you. do you, how did you do all that? How did you get to where you're at with all that? Thank you so much for asking that. And a lot of great uh, tools, tips, and techniques that everyone out there watching can use. Number one, make a decision. I always go back to having strong decision-making muscles. And I made the decision to be an effective and efficient, succinct coach that people could rely upon. Now, um, I know there's a lot of flaky people out there that sometimes show up or they get their emotions of all, I don't feel like it today. They just don't show up or they don't, they're not consistent. For me, I have to be consistent because that's a, a, a goal. That's a vision of how I want to live my life. That's how I want to be as a woman. Mm -hmm. So when I made that decision, I started then using my time wisely. We all have 24 hours in a day. I took out all the distractions and I made sure that I showed up for myself. I also link pleasure to that. I know there's two driving forces in life. There's pain and pleasure. I have rewired myself and trained myself to link a lot of pain to not being consistent. So that means I link pleasure to being consistent and I really enjoy preparing. I believe Carrie that in order for anyone to be consistent, you've got to prepare the next day. Like tomorrow, today, I will prepare what I'm gonna do tomorrow and there on. And even on Sundays, I prepare for the whole week. So this way I'm in a flow state and as I'm having fun, I can enjoy it, I'm not stressed. And I feel like that's when I'm at my best, when I'm at, actually when I can be consistent. I, on the other hand, the old me, and I'll wrap this up in 30 seconds, I was not consistent. I was all over the place. I was going to bed late, two o'clock in the morning, waking up at 11. I was just kind of one big fog. I was wearing jogging suit, crazy hair. I was just a hot mess going nowhere fast. And I knew the pain that I felt then. And I revisit that pain and I use it as fuel to keep myself being consistent and focused and hyper-focused and not frazzled and kind of mentally fogged, jet lagged brain and not getting my rest and not getting my workouts. So I remember the old me and I remember, oh, I never want to go there. It was such a lonely time. I felt so alone. It was just a dark time in my life. And that's when I took my before photo and, and it was a Polaroid back then. So that's how long ago it was, the one that you had a wave like this. So to fast forward to the end of the story, I started my journey becoming the woman I wanted to be, fighting for the future woman by being consistent. I also learned you don't take a bath once and you're clean the rest of your life. You have to do four to six workouts a week. You have to eat healthy, really six days, seven days out of the week to maintain your your goals. And I really have fallen in love with that journey and the commitment that involves. And last but not least, I want to be that type of coach to my VIP tribe. I, I respect women too much. I don't want to fake them. I don't want to con them. I don't want to scam them. I want them to be able to look up to me and say, she's consistent. She never flakes out. By the grace of God, I've never canceled a live class in six years online by thank you, God, knock on wood. <laughs> So I kept my immune system strong, stress low, and just whatever I couldn't do, I let go and let God. So um, that's my answer on that. And that one, that one was, was a great question. I want to thank you for that. So anything you want to add to that before I ask you the last I, one? Oh, well, I got one more for you here. One more. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> now that you know about my story, what really stood out to you as a life coach? Um, that needs yeah. to be enforced here. Any silver linings to dark clouds? Any tips for our audience members? Yes. Any help fortify their battles? 
and you know win their own personal fights because everybody is battling something that no one else knows about well, I just took like four pages of notes right here. So what I learned about your story is that you rely on yourself. You know that no one's going to take care of you. Yes, you have support of your family and they love you, but you're like, it's up to me to kind of lead the way. So it's like one, two, three, jump out of bed, get grateful, write it down, jot it down. Don't take anything for granted, even the little things. Dance, move your body, be grateful for it. And, you know, as a metaphor, get on that Harley and ride it. Even if you had to tape your catheter to your side, you're going to get on that Harley and ride it. So that's a metaphor for anyone out there watching. Live your life. Be free. Enjoy it. It's for you. It's for you. And I also love that you said you always had a vision of being a great mother. That really touches my heart, especially next month being Mother's Day. I think that is a woman. All of us that are mothers or have mothers or have friends that are mothers, um, we, we really connect with that bond and that, that really touched me. Um, I think people need to understand that you can't judge a book by its cover because looking at you, I would never have known you went over 30 surgeries. So everyone's got a story. And when you share that story, we learn. And I learned so much through just hearing your story. And I think the mental strength, you touched a lot upon mental strength, mentally strong, but also laughing, allowing yourself to laugh. So you don't crack under the pressure. Right. And, um, Angels, we had a talk before this that you believe in divine intervention, that God is with you and you have angels watching over you. And I think it's very important as you go using your faith into the next surgeries and your next round of rehab um, and that your vibe really does attract your tribe. You put your vibe out, it might offend people that are not ready for your type of energy over the top, beautiful energy. And that's okay. That's just, it is what it is. And then you'll find your angels, your tribe of women that are like you. And then it's like a full on party and keep those women around you. So I learned so much from you, from your story. And um, that's why I love to take notes. So great, great, great one. I have last one for you in closing. And then I'm gonna announce the winner and we're blowing up Facebook. I'm gonna announce the winner to everyone here. Um, in closing, I know we covered a lot, but kind of broad stroking, any major bullet points that you wanna drive home with our audience today that you really need just to impress upon them that when they watch this video, because it'll be going on YouTube and they maybe want to revisit it, that you want to just hit home and drive home with them that you want to share before we wrap up this interview? Um, anything in your life is possible. Oh, wow. Anything. Um, you can make anything happen in your life. I, I have witnessed some amazing things over the years and I'm, I'm blessed to have a, a supportive husband and supportive kids and supportive family. And if yes. you don't have that, you can make your own family out of yes. your Yes. Really, anything is possible. I you love can, that. And maybe you can't put your mind to it and you need help getting there, but there is always someone that you can reach out to that will help you back, myself included. You, any, you know, I have so many people in my life that can really help you get there. Yes. You know, and maybe you just need the attaboy or maybe you need that kick in your old wad booty there to get up and go, <laughs> you know, because I know I do, you know, but anything's possible. I love that. Anything is possible. And also find your family. I always believe we have blood family, the family you were born in. And then you have friends. Friends to me are like family you choose. So I feel so blessed to say that you're my family, that I choose you as a friend and as, a, as having a coaching relationship with and to learn from and to grow stronger upwards with. Anything is possible. And the power of just having friends, having your back to give you that, making, making you laugh or a swift kick in the hiney, right? Either, <laughs> either way. So I learned so much. I feel like I got a PhD in motivation now. Can we just give Carrie a round of applause for her amazing energy she shared with us? Thank you so much. Now, I want to announce our winner. We're going to actually take it way, way, way back from when I met you in Tampa. I had a beautiful uh, woman reach out to me, Dacia. Dacia. Yeah is going to be our winner. I know she is a wonderful woman. That's how we met. We met at the Strong Camp in Tampa. Congratulations, you'll be winning a JNL VIP wellness package, compliments of this amazing interview. And I wanna thank you again, Carrie, for being part of our VIP tribe, sharing your light and growing. Because when you expand yourself and kind of push yourself out, you gain so much. Anything you wanna say that you've gained just from becoming a VIP member? Uh way of like a lot, a lot of more motivation and a lot more belief in myself 
which is great because you can always believe more in yourself. And I just gained a whole new tribe of women who are living that lifestyle and really, I need a lot of motivation myself. And yeah. that's what I gained by joining the VIPs. And I just, I've only been here, you know, a short period of time, very yes. short. So yes. I can't even imagine where I'm going to be in a year or two years. Woo! I just got chills everywhere. The electricity is over the top. Thank you so much. So what we do here is so much more than just working out and jumping. And by the way, Carrie is modifying, doing what she can, and she's kicking butt. So thank you so much. And it's hard to even pull out of this fabulous interview. I'm going to have it up on my YouTube channel. We can watch it over and over again. Again, thank you so much, Carrie. Guys, if you want more information, you know where to find me, jnlvip.com. And let's root Carrie on to her next big round of success. And everyone that showed up, thank you so much. Be the change you want to see in the world. And we will continue with our magic and miracles because May is the official month of miracles. Let it's them begin. Birthday, Mom. Oh, and your birthday month. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Ring the happy bell for that. We're celebrating. When is it, by the way? May 11th, baby. Okay. May 11th. It is on the calendar party. We love you and we'll see you soon. God bless you. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.